Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022 and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a little bit uh, later this morning. Currently, uh, we do see futures are down a bit this morning. Dow futures down 90, S&P futures down about 12, NASDAQ futures down about 35. That's a little bit of an improvement off of what they were just a little bit ago. We'll see where we finish. There's reason for hope today after a strong rally yesterday. Uh, also, some sentiment issues suggesting maybe we could see a rally in the near term. But let's not forget, we got the Fed meeting. Uh, that's getting underway. We've got a big uh, employment report this week. Uh, and with the volatility index as high as it's been, I mean, it could be extremely volatile in both directions. So we could see huge swings. And uh, so you just got to be on your toes as a trader, or you can certainly elect just to sit it out, sit it on the si sit on the sidelines and just be patient and allow this choppiness and this weakness um, to continue. Uh, today, let's go through the agenda. We're going to start off with the daily market recap, jump into talking technically. I want to show you a couple of uh, sentiment charts uh, in talking technically. Things are improving for the long term. Um, talked earlier in the year about the fact we needed to reset our sentiment. I think we're on our way to doing that. Uh, then we'll get into chart lists, show you a little bit about the upcoming earnings um, relative strength chart list that we use. The Earnings spotlight, a uh, number of companies reported. We'll go over some of the biggest reactions to uh, the earnings reports that have come out since last night or after the close on Monday. Then we'll wrap up with the three you must see. Uh, first, let's go over to Earnings Beats. And for those of you who are new, go to earningsbeats.com, scroll down, and you will see an area to sign up for our free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. Just takes a name, email address, hit that subscribe button and you're set up. No credit card required, no, uh, or you can uh, unsubscribe at any time. This comes out three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We try to issue it by about 8.30 in the morning. So it's out about an hour before the market opens. Um, could be some trading candidates. If you're interested in trading, um, that's completely up to you. But uh, we look at this based on a few things that are important to us, relative strength, earnings, gaps, candlesticks, trend lines. Sometimes it's just a article uh, looking at a specific industry group, you know, that may be either setting up for a move to the upside or maybe it's breaking down. Um, but we try to make it very educational and I think uh, you'll enjoy it. So we'll start off with the daily market recap and uh, didn't start off so well. And you can see on the Dow, actually you can see across all of our major indices intraday, the Dow was the only one that has not gone down below the February low. It went down close to it, didn't quite get there on Monday, but the S&P 500 set a new low, NASDAQ new low, mid cap index new low, small cap index new low. So there was the threat of some significant impulsive selling. And of course we saw some of that last week. We saw it yesterday morning. It looked like, okay, maybe this is it. Maybe we're going to continue going. There was one thing that was weird, though, yesterday. Um, and that was, even when the market was down early, the aggressive groups were actually outperforming by a wide margin. I don't know if you noticed yesterday, but take a look down here. Real estate was the worst performer. And when you look at the best performers, we had communication services, this is an aggressive group, up two and three quarters percent. I mean, keep in mind, the S&P was only up a little more than the half of 1%. Communication services, 2.76. Energy was 1.6. Energy uh, bouncing back, trying to get back through its moving averages. Technology, one and a half percent. That was almost three times the S&P 500. Kind of unusual. Usually when technology has a big day like that, usually the S&P 500 also has a big day. But the defensive groups were so weak that it actually held the market back some. Um, discretionary up 1.46. So there are the three key groups in my mind, uh, technology, discretionary, and communication services. And they were among the top four sectors. We haven't seen that much lately. And what was odd, like I said, was the fact that early in the day when the market was down, 
these were among the leading sectors. Now, if you're unfamiliar with my show and haven't really listened much, I pay huge attention to the rotation and relative strength of certain groups. So when I see the market going down, but I see rotation favoring the aggressive groups, that can be a short-term positive. <clears throat> Could turn out to be a long-term positive, but at least in the short term, because normally we're going to see these three groups le leading to the downside uh, when the market's weak. And this was the opposite. Think back to the end of December when I, I called the market top. I talked about the fact that defensive groups were leading the rally. That's not good. Well, aggressive groups leading during a decline on a relative basis, not leading the selling, but actually seeing the opposite, seeing money rotate back into those groups, the aggressive groups during a market decline, that's a good sign. And we wanna see more of that. Now in December, when we called a top, defensive groups led by for a month that last final rally in December of 2021, defensive groups were leading. And that was kind of the kiss of death for the market. We want to see this type of rotation that we saw yesterday. We want to see that continue. One day, I'm not going to make a big, bold call after having one day. You know, we still got a lot of issues in the market right now. Could that have been it? Sure, it could have been, you know. We went down, we tested some key support areas. See right there on the Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ. I mean, this could be a false breakdown and maybe we rally from here. Same goes for the mid caps and small caps. Maybe these are just false breakdowns and then we're just gonna spring back to the upside. Very possible. I think if you're in cash and what I've been saying to members, if you're in cash, um, now's the time probably to begin putting something in the market. I don't know if this is it. We're four months into this cyclical bear market. These tend to last anywhere from, you know, the really short ones, one month. Those are ones where you basically have a crash like 1987 or the pandemic of 2020, you know, three, four, five weeks, boom, done. But it goes down and absolutely decimates everything in about a month. It's like a F5 tornado coming through. Yeah, it might have sunny skies afterwards, but the damage has been done. Most cyclical bear markets, though, tend to last like three to six months, maybe a little longer. This started at the beginning of the year. So that takes us to the end of the first or the second quarter. We're now one month into the second quarter. So this could be it. I'm not sure. I, I still think we go lower, but it wouldn't be a bad idea, in my opinion, to begin to build up positions. And normally what I do is I look at the QQQ, I look at the spider, because if I'm wrong, um, you know, if we get to a point where things really, we get a big, big, big move to the downside and capitulation, I might be a little bit more interested in going into a couple of individual stocks, a couple of names I really like, something like Tesla. Um, you know, if that really, if the whole market just gets really crushed for a period of three to five days, you know, you lose 10% in three days, that kind of a move um, with a capitulatory type volume reversal at the bottom, VIX up in the 40s. Th that would be the kind of move that I would say, okay, maybe I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive. But for right now, um, we're going to watch it. Like I said, we got some big stuff coming out. We know the Fed's going to almost certainly raise 50 basis points tomorrow. They, they start their meeting today. We've got the ADP report out tomorrow, non-farm payrolls on Friday. I mean, there's a lot here. Interest rates, the 10-year treasury yield yesterday hit 3%. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. So here's the yield, which has just gone absolutely berserk to the upside. Um, but the 10-year treasury yield finished yesterday 2.996. It's pretty darn close to three. We got the 3.002. 3%. I mean, less than two months ago, 1.7. Now, all of a sudden, 3%. This, if we go back, I'm going to go back uh, five years. This 3% level that we hit, we had not seen since back in the fourth quarter of 2018. Fourth quarter, 2018. And we haven't gone above about three and a quarter. I have to go back a little ways here. 
Yeah, there's three and a quarter, and this is a 10-year chart. So the 10-year treasury yield is getting close to moving to more than a 10-year high. Let's keep going back. 15 should do it. All right, so the last time we were over three and a quarter was back, looks like maybe the end of the first quarter of 2011. So we're getting close to some key area. I'm going to personally be surprised if we go through three and a quarter. I think that definitely could spook the market short term. I don't think that would be the end all of this of the secular bull market. I think we've we've got probably till four and a half five percent on the ten year treasury yield historically, before I would be, you know, beginning to grow more much more concerned. So we still got a lot of room, but I do think you know pre pandemic high was three and a quarter. Um, Right before the pandemic, we were around 2%, took that big drop. I think we've gotten a lot of that back. Um, I believe we're going to get to a point, and we might find it out pretty soon, that inflation has topped, um, and we're going to start to roll back over in the um, annual rate of core inflation um, at the, at the uh, consumer level. So CPI, the core CPI, the annual rate, I think, we may have topped when we reported the last inflation report. We're going to get another one here in about 10 days or so. I forget what day it is. I have to take a look. Might be next Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, so it could be the 10th, 11th, something in there. But I'll be, I'll be talking about that a lot more between now and then. Anyhow, uh, watch three and a quarter. I think that's going to be a key area. All right. So let's uh, move on to talking technically. I'm going to bring up just the, the S&P 500 with a couple of charts underneath, a couple panels. One, first one being the equity-only put-call ratio. And this is a five-day moving average. So if you want to see how you can set this up, if you go down here at the bottom, I put in price and the ticker symbol for the, the equity-only put-call ratio is the dollar sign CPCE. All right, dollar sign CPCE. Now, if you put in invisible, and let me just get rid of, because I have a simple five-day moving average. I'll get rid of that for a second. So if you put in invisible and you hit update, well, it's invisible. You can't see anything. So that's why I put this overlay in here. So if you put the overlay and you do a five-day moving average of the put call ratio, then it will show you that overlay. Just like up here, see the 20 and the 50 day moving average? These are overlays. And then the price chart. Well, if I went up here and I changed, well, if I changed the price chart from candlesticks to invisible, the only thing you would see is the moving averages. Now, of course, I don't want that. But that's the way you get rid of all the, the daily noise and just see the overlays, the moving averages. So down here, this is a five-day moving average of the equity-only put-call ratio. Now, I don't think we've reached a level where we normally would reach. Now, I'm going to go back. We'll go back 15 years. Now, if you look at these readings, the real panicked readings when we put in major lows. Let me see if I can get this for you here. So right here. Now, that was the record holder. That was the pandemic. We got to 1.05. That's more equity puts being bought than equity calls on average over a five-day period. It's the only time we've hit 105 in the last 15 years. During the financial crisis, when things got crazy, we did go above one. We got to 103 here, 101 here. If you get to one, you are really panicked. I mean, we are in a market that basically is just free falling. I don't think we're going to see that. I think what we could see is something like we saw in 2018, where we went down, went sideways for a little bit, and had one more big swoosh down. And we saw that uh, equity only put call ratio jump five days to 0.90. I don't know if we go that high. I think we could get to 0.80, though. And if you look across here, 0.80, you know, when you get to 0.80, you've probably hit a pretty key low in the market, or you're at some. Um, you're approaching a kilo if you're not at it. But just look, I mean, I don't make this stuff up. This is where the five-day moving average is. You can see it's basically bottoming with every, every market bottom. 
Now, some of these market bottoms, like this one right here, we bottomed and went up, and then we came right back down to a new low. The equity only put call ratio is not designed to tell us, you know, to give us long term calls. What normally happens, though, is when you're in a secular bull market and you go through a period of weakness where folks get more nervous and start buying a lot of puts. In a secular bull market, you, you have a lot of bottoms where you just keep going higher. That's what a secular bull market does. We just keep trending higher and higher and higher. So when you get any weakness at all, that's when you're normally going to mark a bottom in a secular bull market. Now, in a secular bear market, like we saw back 2007, 2008, I mean, look at how many times we were up at point nine point. We stayed up here. This is how sentiment completely changes. You know, you reset. This was reset to a bearish, to bearish mode. But when we finally bottomed, we were ready to launch for a long time. Then we went up and we got down here to a pretty low reading. And while we sold off, we saw us reset a little bit. Not a lot, but that, that was 0.80 right there, five-day moving average. And then we run up, and the market gets complacent again, a lot of calls being bought. And then we run into choppiness, and guess what? Things start getting a little bit more nervous. And then we have a swoosh, and we reset. And then once we get up to this, this these were over 0.9 readings, but they marked bottoms. This was a 0.9 reading. It marked a bottom. Just look across here. So when we're seeing this moving higher like it is right now, this is really good. Now, 0 0.7, 0 0.72, is that enough to mark the bottom? I don't think it is. But we're heading in the right direction. This is exactly what I talked about at the beginning of the year. Beginning of the year, the five-day moving average of the put-call ratio was 0 0.48, 0 0.47. We're at 0 0.71 now. I said we needed to get readings back up like we've seen in previous bearish periods. 0.8 would be nice. That's where we've topped many times in this secular bull market. It topped in terms of the equity only put call ratio. Bottomed, I mean, here we didn't really even have a bottom. We had a little bit of a move down, but this wasn't really that bad. Um, but these others, you can see we did go down for a while, mark a bottom go down for a while, that pretty much marked the bottom. It looks like we might have gone just slightly below. These readings definitely marked bottoms. Right here, this reading at 0.76 marked this bottom, 0.9 here, and so on. So it's really important to, to watch um, the equity-only put-call ratio because it has such a great history at marking uh, bottoms especially. I don't really look at it to mark tops. I mean, I suppose you could. You get down into the point fours. I mean, that's pretty complacent. There was a top. I mean, right here was a top, but we had been, you know, we had lower readings before the top. I don't think this is quite as accurate as at marking tops. Um, I mean, here was one down 0.53. Looks like it was pretty low, but we were just getting started. So I don't, th here, I mean, my gosh, if you were calling for a, for the market to stop moving higher as soon as you went up when went down to 0.4, look what you were in for. I mean, kept going higher and higher and higher. But equity only, this equity only put call ratio, when it spikes, these peaks, this tells us that investors and traders are basically throwing the kitchen sink in. They, they think the market will never go up again. And that's exactly when we go up. So you got to keep an eye on this. We get to 0.8, five-day moving average. We get to 0.8. That's going to be a big, big deal. All right, uh, another chart on the S&P. I'll go through this one a little quicker. But here's the one-year chart. And just look at where the VIX is and what, what has happened with the VIX in the past. Here, back in December, the VIX got above 35. We marked a bottom. Here, the VIX peaked at 38 or 39. We marked a bottom. Here, the VIX is double top, 37 and a half. Guess what? Double bottom, mark the bottom. Here, we get up to 36 and change yesterday. And there's where we finished. So that's why in the near term, you know, when you look at the equity only put call ratio hitting the highest level in two years, 
And then I look at the VIX also at 36, 37. One of the things I said in daily market report yesterday was, you know, if we finish strong, which we did, this could be a short-term reversal point, but it may not last because we got the Fed, we got our uh, ADP employment report, you got the, the uh, monthly non-farm payrolls coming up on Friday. We're going to get that half basis or uh, 50 basis point rise. Uh, the Fed going to definitely lift. I, I feel like they're definitely going to lift the Fed, Fed funds rate up 50 basis points. And they're probably going to talk tough too about possibly more 50 basis point hikes. I don't know how the market's going to react to all that. I can say that we're already nervous, but you can get more nervous. We have seen the VIX during secular bull markets go as high as into the 40s and, and even touch into the low 50s before. Now, there's only two times we've seen, we went all the way up to 90. Two times we went crazy. One was the financial crisis. One was the pandemic. And I think the pandemic was not your normal pullback in a secular bull market. That was a 100-year pandemic. So I tend to write that off as a one-off. But you know, we're getting to the point where when the VIX is up at these levels, this is where you should be thinking about the QQQ and the spider. And it gets back a little bit to what Warren Buffett talks about. You know, you want to be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. I especially like the first part. You want to be greedy when others are fearful. That's what these charts are telling us. Now, if you miss, if, if this VIX goes up into the 40s or touches 50, I mean, we're going a lot lower. We could be down to the 3,500 level that I talked about back in January. I still think we could go to 3,500. At 3,500, personally, I'll be fully invested if we get to 3,500. I think we're going to bottom somewhere. If we do break down again, which I, I would say is probably 75, 80% chance. If we go back lower, I think we're going to bottom somewhere in the 35 to 3,800 range. And from there, I think a year from now, we'll be at an all-time high. So you do the math. I mean, if I'm right about being at an all-time high in a year, 41.55 on the S&P is pretty good level. That's why it wouldn't be a bad idea to be buying in. It's just my opinion. There are some that believe we're in a secular bear market now. That's fine. Everybody makes their call. I don't believe it at all. I think this is a, I think we're going to have a shallow recession. Um, we've got issues. We've got the interest rates, but I do think the, the inflation is going to top. I think interest rates will drop. And when that happens, I think you're going to see growth stocks back in favor in a big way. Yesterday's action, technology, discretionary, com uh, communication services, those groups leading during the first part of the day yesterday when we were down. That could be kind of like the first signal that we're getting of this rotation back toward growth. A little early to say after one day, so I'm not going to make that call, but that's what I'm looking for. That's what I've been looking for. And yesterday was the first day we started to see some of that. So if we do go lower, watch for that. See what groups are leading the move to the downside. That's going to be really, really important. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about, um, actually, let's go into, let's do chart list. So one of the things that we do for our members is we have an upcoming earnings relative strength chart list. And I'm trying to see if that is going to be it. Yeah, this is it right here. So on this chart list, we have 689 charts. And what we've done is we've taken all of the upcoming earnings. So all the earnings for this week, May 2nd through the 6th, and we put them into this chart list with one small difference than most chart lists you see. This chart list isn't set up for just the price action of each stock. It's set up with the price action relative to its industry group. So what this chart is telling me when I look back over the last year is how well is AGNC Investment Corp doing relative to its mortgage REIT peers? Well, it's not a very good performer heading into it to its earnings. 
versus its peers. That just is a sign right away, just screaming at me that Wall Street does not like this company. Why would they be underperforming their peers for three months heading into their earnings report? Obviously, Wall Street, not a fan. Now, what we can do with this chart list, and by the way, this is a chart list that we send out to all of our um, annual members. And we've got our annual special. We haven't announced it yet, but we've got our annual special coming up in about a week. So if you want to try our service for 30 days for free, check out this, this chart list along with other, all the others we do. And then still be subject to our annual special, which is the best special we offer all year long. This would be a great time to jump in and um, experience our service. But what you can do with this chart list is pull it up in summary form. And so you can see right now, this is yesterday's action. So this medical equipment stock right here was the best performer yesterday relative to its peer group. So if we pull it up, you can see there was the big jump yesterday relative to its peer group. And it's been trending higher now for three months. This one looks pretty good. Now, what does it look like on its, remember medical equipment's not very strong. So what does it look like on its relative chart or on its absolute chart? Well, it's moving up, pulled back now yesterday with big volume, moved back up through its moving averages, but overall still in a downtrend. Then you could pull up maybe five years if you wanted, take a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean, this thing's been downtrending for a while. I don't know that this one looks overly exciting to me, but having that chart list at least tells me which stocks are moving and I can narrow my search. Wayfair, which has been a really poor performer, yesterday had a pretty good day relative to its group. But you can see, look at this relative weakness. So is that worth investing in? Probably not. Well, let's take a look at the chart. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, maybe we get to the 20-day, but we've been downtrending. The PPO looks pretty weak. It's starting to turn back up a little bit. But I don't know that that's going to last for very long. I think uh, what, that 20-day moving average could be a problem. But between now and there, you got another 8 bucks, maybe 10%. The problem is if it doesn't get there and it turns around and goes lower, you probably have more than 10% down to the low. So the reward to risk isn't set up great there. Now, the other thing you can do with this list is change. You don't have to just look at a one-day change. How about for three months? This would give us the pre-earnings, three-month period. Which groups or which stocks have been the best performers relative to their group over the last three months? Well, PRCT. And by the way, these first three numbers here tell us the day that they report. 5.05, that's May 5th. So that will be Thursday. So some of these may have jumped because they just reported earnings and jumped with earnings. Like there's 502. Um, this is Avis. And I know yesterday they had a big day. So um, with earnings, they had a huge uh, earnings report. I don't know if that was morning or afternoon. But um, anyway, this is one that's already reported. But you can see these others haven't reported. These 505s. And 503 even, even if it reported re reports this morning, it hasn't seen its reaction yet. But anyway, this PRCOT or PRCT right there, that's been a huge mover. So you can check that out. Anyway, I'm running out of time. Uh, let me just give you the, a quick three you must see. Uh, first, uh, Moody's, big reversal yesterday, but uh, we do, this is a weekly chart. I think this one's got some issues still below its 20-day moving average. Next up is... Align technology, same thing, moving down, rallying yesterday, but still got some work to do. I'd be careful there. Last one, Corvo, it's been rallying now for more than a week, um, and it too is in a big, steady downtrend. Watch these weekly charts. They really need to get past moving averages. Listen, everybody have a great day. I'll be back over at Earnings Beats on Wednesday. Happy trading, everybody. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.